What's good, y'all? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Happy Wednesday. Well, technically, it's probably Thursday where you guys are, because not since you guys, you know, are like in the future stuff like that already. This is my Aussies. But anyway, shout out to my boy Ross Michael. We are going to check it out. We are going to see what's on. Hope you guys are having an amazing, amazing, great day. Or if you guys did have a great day, well, hope you guys are having a good day. Anyway, going to check out some collapses. You know, we see some collapses. Obviously, poor Adelaide kind of collapsed in the you know finals last year, losing the first two games. He absolutely eliminated. And then, obviously, we had Carlton two years ago. They were in the finals, and they absolutely just shit in the beds and not making the finals. But actually, I'm actually making up for it this upcoming, this past season. So, but you guys let me know what midseason collapse, what AFL season collapses you guys remember. But guess what? In this video, we are going to check it out. And we are going to see what's on. As always, hope you guys are doing good and amazing. Yes, I just said that again, so I have to repeat myself. As always, don't forget to like the video and sub as well. I got the do rag going today. I got the Adui, so you know it's some just it's not anything too crazy. Some simple, some light. Um, appreciate you guys as always. Love you guys, and um, that's it. That's that's the intro. That's the intro. Don't forget to like the video and sub. Let's get it, man. At the end of each AFL season, the solitary side who lifts up the cup will arguably be the only team that gets remembered in the future. Maybe fewer people will recall the close finishes and runners-up, but barely anyone will look back on the AFL clubs who had a significant start to their season, fancying their chances to snag a top four spot and a potential flag on the cards to only go and completely derail their year and slump out of finals. In this video today, in no particular order, we go over seven of some of the biggest AFL single season collapses. The 2005 Richmond Tigers. Mm. Looking to break their slump of no finals since 2001 and producing dismal season after season performances. Golly. The 2000. Golly. Did y'all see the fans? The fans are going to beat their. <laughs> they were. Hey, I don't know what they were saying. They probably come all, all type of just words. But boy, did they look pissed off. Let's. Man, we got to see what happened because they look pissed off. But he looks familiar. He looks familiar. 2005 Tigers were full of optimism. Manny Richardson and Nathan Brown were in their prime, and Tigers fans were eager to see what their first and fourth overall draft picks of Deledio and Richard Tamblin could do. A huge 62-point defeat to the Cats in the Ooh. opening game of the season didn't seem to shock the club that much, as by round nine they'd own a 7-2 record and be sitting at third place on the ladder. In this time period, we'd witnessed some of the best footy that an individual has played in a short amount of time of Nathan Brown, Nathan setting Brown. the competition alight. Mm. In those first nine games, he slotted home an outstanding 32 goals 19, placing second on the Coleman leaderboard during the time, and picked up seven Brownlow votes. Nathan he was Brown truly hard. kicking goals for fun and was possibly the Tigers' biggest influence. The turning point of not only the Tigers, but also Nathan Brown's 2005 campaign occurred in their Round 10 matchup against the Demons. This was the game that created one of the most sickening AFL injuries of all time, oh my with Nathan God. Brown breaking his leg in unfortunate and horrifying oh fashion. A 57-point loss on the night kick-started their collapse, with Nathan Brown's injury seeming to shake the club. The Tigers Ugh. couldn't get the ball rolling after that, and apart from their huge upset one-point win against the eventual premiers of the Swans, Richmond only won three more games from round 10 onwards and ended up finishing 12th with a 10-12 and 12 record after a disappointing second half of the season. The 1999 Geelong Cats. I mean, I, that sucks because obviously, you know, when you lose like your best player, stuff like that, like, and like how good Nathan Brown seemed like he was that year in 05. I mean, it's, it's, it sucks. It, it's, it really, really sucks because, you know, because just how much Nathan Brown probably meant for that team. But it seemed like, you know, their top two draft picks, you know, obviously as rookies, you know, some come out the stage and go absolutely crazy, like, like, you know, like Daco, so, you know, Ashcraft, stuff like that. But, um, oof. They, yeah, they, they should have been after that. They should have been after that. I, I, you see why the parents were so upset. Coming off the back of their first season without finals footy since the eight-team finals yeah, season structure, the Cats were looking to bounce back in 1999 and return to the top eight. It would be no easy task, however, with their club champions of Gary Ablett, 
Billy Brownless and Paul Couch retiring from the club at the end of the 1997 season. Mm. Hence their 12th place finish in 1998. Rebuild. A side mixed with young and old with the likes of Gary Hocking, Peter Riccardi and a very young Matthew Scarlett. Geelong started like a house on fire, winning their first five games and even knocking off the two grand finalists of Carlton and North Melbourne in the process. Okay. Comfortably sitting in second place after round five, things took a turn for the worst right after. The Cats went on a huge free fall, losing a whopping nine games in a row, followed by a close win at home against the dead last Pies, then another two consecutive losses. As a result, saw them slumped to 12th place with two games outside the top eight. Winning four of their last five games in convincing fashion seemed like a promising feat for the next season, but it wasn't enough to dig themselves out of the huge hole they created, as they ended the season at 11th with a 10-12 and 12 record. It's a season again. truly to forget, especially after such a promising start at 5-0. It'd be like that, though. The 2010 Brisbane Lions. After an impressive 2009 season with a finals win under their belts, the Lions were seeking to return to the top of the football mountain in 2010, still possessing absolute stars in their side, with Simon Black, rising star winner Daniel Rich, Luke Power, Jonathan Brown. Danny Rich? He just retired, like, he just retired, like, either last year or this, I think he just retired, like, this past year. Damn. I didn't know he's been with us for that long. Shout out Danny Rich. Shout out my dog. And a newly acquired Brendan Favola to bolster hey, their potent forward Vivola. line. A team that was predicted to score? make finals again. Their projections started very well, jumping out to a convincing 4-0 start. A team with high potential and a dangerous forward line. Their spearheads were in fine form, with Favola having 13 goals and Brown having 19 goals after round four. It seemed that the Lions were on track to make back-to-back -back finals appearances. However, they couldn't get things clicking after their round four win. Mm. Injuries to Brown and Favola was a heavy factor in why Brisbane pumped out a dismal 3-15 record from that Dang, point onwards, score. which would see him finish at 13th in the bottom four. It was later revealed that Brown and Favola were playing most of the season with injured quads, mm. most likely a key reason for their season collapse. Let's not forget the lingering unknown of the new Gold Coast side entering the competition that next year. Yeah, it might have created an uneasy distraction on the playing list, with rumours spreading and the likes of Michael Riscatelli and Jared Brennan being shipped off to the Suns the next year. Mm. 2016 North Melbourne one of the few teams in today's video that might have actually made finals, but because of the severity in their collapse, they are a must inclusion in this video today. After back-to-back -back prelim final appearances, most people, however, were not bought over their overachieving finals performances. Alongside them containing the oldest list out of any team in the comp, many had North as a mid-table side, with a good chance for finals heading into 2016. No but with all the thoughts aside, the Kangaroos soared past the pack in the first half of the year, jumping out to a 9-0 start. But many fans and pundits at the time were not so quick to be in complete awe of their record. Only two of the first nine opponents North played were in the top eight at the time, with many stating that they had an easy draw to start mm. the year off and to just wait and see how they would go against more top eight teams. Ah, uh, so... So they did... So basically, it seemed like North Melbourne did what they were supposed to do. They were being on, like, you know the crappy teams but then you know when it's time to go up against the big teams it seemed like they weren't ready like i which i guess i seem like they weren't they weren't really ready for the challenge to be like the bigger you know the better teams and um it seemed like they folded they seemed like they folded kind of similar to like Geelong and stuff like that it turned out the words could not be more true the ruse struggled to match up against the top eight sides as after round nine They'd only win three more games, Jeez. which would just manage to sneak them into finals, oh, finishing in, uh, an eighth with a 10-12 and 12 record. They got in. Their finals campaign was short-lived, losing to the Crows in the Elam final by over 10 goals to cap off a very up-and-down season. Did y'all see that? Crows in the Elam final by over 10 goals. Dang! You thought you see that WWE move? That bro just came in like, ooh! To cap off a very up-and-down season. How team could start off with an insane record of 9-0, and 0, 
to then almost miss finals yeah, crazy. has to be one of the biggest single season collapses we have seen. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> the 2012 yeah. Essendon Bombers. Bombers. Quite easily one of the most infamous squads in AFL uh, history. Cheating. The 2012 Dons would be the Cheaters. season where the playing squad would partake in doping, Cheaters. which was later revealed the next year. The program primarily compromised with injections of supplements to improve soft tissue recovery times to enable players to endure and benefit from a heavier training workload. No doubt, it certainly reflected their performance in the first half of the 2012 season, jumping out to an impressive 8-1 record and sitting in second place. Now, this was around the time that the players stopped receiving the injections, and mm. since the program seemed to correlate with their on-field performances, a lot of the players went down to soft tissue injuries, slowly derailing their season. They'd 4-6 after round 17, before they would collapse and lose their last seven games finishing in 11th place Good. with an 11-11 record Good. Cheers, as they were me. yet to learn their fate that very next season. Cheers. The 2018 Port Adelaide Power. A lot of Aaron. things are pointing in a positive light heading into 2018 for Port Adelaide. A heartbreaking Elam final loss in 2017 usually translates into a more hungry and determined season the next year. A team expected to make finals again, the Power found a nice patch of form in the middle parts of the season winning five in a row and pushing up into the top four. They maintained their position in the top four after round 19, seemingly just needing two more wins from the last four games to lock in a final spot. However, the last four games were tough. A showdown game followed by two top four games against the Eagles and the Pies, and then a tricky game against the Dons at home was who they had to face. Mm. And unfortunately, the pair collapsed at the worst time. Adelaide got their revenge back with a showdown win with a Josh Jenkins winner, then followed a loss that Port fans refused to watch. Oh, Leading the whole game against the Eagles, Jeremy McGovern floated forward and slotted home the winner after the siren. Jeez. A huge defeat away to the Pies hurt their percentage and bumped them out of the eight. Now needing to win against the Bombers at home and for Geelong to lose or draw against the Suns in Geelong, Port weren't even able to complete what was in front of them going down to the Dons at home in poor fashion and finishing off the year in terrible style. The Power ended up finishing 10th in the end with being a genuine top four chance only a month ago. It'd be like How that. things can change and collapse so quick. It'd be like that. The 2022 Carlton Blues. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not funny. But are we, are we surprised? Are we surprised how good I thought this team was? Until they fold it. Count fans. But the unbelievable collapse and fashion Crazy. on how the Blues finished Crazy off last collapse. season has to be in this video today. The 2022 Blues were one of the very few teams in AFL history to have been in the top eight every single week and to then drop out the very last week and not make finals at all. Yeah. The way the list was built, the belief from the new coach of Michael Voss, and their promising start to the season, all things were pointing in the right direction of finally breaking their Troy finals Colonel, drought. Mackay, they were dominant in the Chris. midfield, high in contested numbers, and the spine were working wonders. Jacob Wiedering and Lewis Young were playing good footy, Cripps was at his peak, and the combination of Kerno and Mackay was their main source of goals. But it seemed that the two main factors that were dragging them down were injuries and experience. Mm. Many holes in their defence with Weedering and a lot of their depth options out. Arguably one of their most important plays structure-wise of George Hewitt was out with an ongoing back injury. Walsh and Mackay missing a few guns on top of that too. The lack of a fully fit squad was a key reason on why they couldn't get it done at the end of the day. And so was experience. The Blues struggled to beat teams that were above them, right. which was on display the last four rounds of their season. Needing just one win from their remaining four games to finally lock in a final spot, Carlton played a... But they had some tough games, though. They played Brisbane, Collingwood, I think Adelaide as well. Like, but, but, like you just need one win. You just need one. <laughs> you couldn't do that. But, but like you said, that's where the experience, because it could be have like experienced boys who has been here before. They can help out the younger guys, stuff like that. Like, listen, like, this is what we need to do to win this game. But we don't, but when we were dealing with the injuries that they had, plus, like you said, like the experience wasn't really as great as it should have been. A dismal performance really, you know, in their shock loss to Adelaide. Success. 
a thumping defeat to the Lions in Queensland, followed by a heartbreaker to the Demons and a more crazy. gallant defeat. That was it crazy. all meant nothing, as the Bargers still needed that one win, and it would have to come against the Pies. And, lost. and in one of the best games of 2022, the Blues went down by a solitary point in one of the most unbelievable collapses and ways Absolutely that an AFL club crazy. has missed finals. So over on, there were some of the biggest AFL single season collapses in AFL history. Thank you very much for tuning into today's videos. Hopefully you felt... It knows crazy, like the... I think each one was crazy and different. Obviously, Collingwood, we know that was recently. The Hawthorne one, they were cheating, so good. Uh, Brisbane one, just sucks. It just sucks as us. North, North Melbourne one was crazy as well. Like, each one was crazy just because of, like, how they collapsed and stuff like that. I think like the main theme was that, you know, just because you start the season off well doesn't mean you're gonna finish the season off well, and that's what we kind of saw with some of these teams, like teams throwing five and zero, nine and zero, stuff like that, and then not being able to finish the job. Maybe you know they got too high, you know, who knows? But hope you guys did enjoy the video. It was very very good. Shout out to my boy Ralph Macca as always. Don't forget to like the video and sub as well. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.